Welcome back. Um, so, oh, uh, this morning, uh, Vincent is going to give his, his uh, fourth lecture. Um, so thanks very much. Vincent. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> so uh, I will continue with this uh, issue of uh, waves uh, for a persistent uh, uh, motion uh, motivated by a bacterial population. And let me recap what we have. Maybe uh, so it's, it's uh, always the same problem, uh, uh, question, but in, in different words. I try to uh, to formulate it differently. So today's formulation is the following: We are considering um, it's the same uh, um, uh, a displacement, which is a sum of um, times and velocities. Okay, if you, if you if you are given times and velocities. And you can reconstruct, of, two, of course, your curve, uh, your, your position like, uh, like this. And uh, where Ti uh, is uh, exponentially uh, distributed with a uh, rate one, and uh, Vi is drawn from uh, uh, a normal um, uh, distribution. So it is the same as uh, yesterday and uh, last uh, Friday. And we're interested in the, in the large deviation uh, for this. Okay, so with time. Let me draw it like this, x, you have x0 here. And you are making a, a trajectory like this with, um, with my notation, this one is v0, v1, v2, etc. Okay, and uh, we are interested in the large deviation such process with this particular choice. Okay, so I'm a little bit uh, embarrassed because uh, as you may have noticed, I'm I don't have a strong background in probability, and I uh, have a very little background in large deviation. I'm mostly doing PDs. Uh, so it might be that this has already been solved in a textbook. And if so, please uh, tell me, because I, I mean, I, I looked for it and uh, contacted some people, and uh, I, I've been, uh, you know, uh, there was this uh, uh, paper by Fagionato et al, for which I, I found very, uh, which I found illuminating. But which is a case where V essentially VI is a finite uh, set, or which I think can be uh, generalized to a compact, uh, at, uh, at least in 1D, uh, uh, compact uh, interval. But yet it seems to be uh, not complete. It's not the same setting in this, uh, in this uh, uh, when you have uh, unbounded velocities, and uh, in, in particular in the case of the Gaussian distribution. And the reason why it's different, we will see today, is that in, in there, uh, so this is a finite. Uh, velocity, let's say, finite, oh yes, I'm writing loosely like this. In that setting, what happens is that uh, even in the large deviation uh, uh, regime, um, uh, velocities are changing all the time in such a way that there is some kind of averaging going on here. And what you see in the result is that you, are, you, you need to compute uh, the cost of a, of a trajectory with some, uh, let's say, mean velocity, where at each time in your large uh, deviation setting, you have a measure over your finite set of uh, possible velocities. Sorry, yes. Uh, I think I missed the definition. I don't see the small t, x small t. What is the relation? So an x, x t is there. So it's, this is on from i equal what to what? Ah, from uh, zero to uh, n. So what is small t? Ah, sorry. Uh, it's, no, it's, this is not, uh, this should be uh, uh, this n such that uh, the sum of ti is less than t. OK. OK, it's uh, some n i maybe. Uh, and you have the sum of ti uh, equals to t. Yes. yes. Oh, I think you can do it with an indicator function. So if you take capital Ti being some of the first i exponentials, and then indicator that T is between Ti and respect to one. So that the active velocity Vi is activated during that indicator. Something like this, you mean? Yeah. Uh, T is between T, uh, uh, I, and T. So it should be the sum of all Ti's, right? Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> okay. Okay, no, that was a good point. Okay, I, I, I think I got the idea. Yeah, yeah. I have a PD guy. <laughs> and I, I wanted to be loose on that. Uh, okay, on that. That's all right. Okay. okay. Sorry? Yeah, thanks. 
Uh, okay, so um, my my plan for today is to uh, is to is to is to answer this question for this particular case, and uh, I will follow, as I told you, the the very uh, circumvoluted strategy, which is to start from the uh, from the PDE, which is on this f t x and d, to uh, take the limit as epsilon goes to zero. So epsilon will be my uh, my scale at which I want to look at this uh, at this process. Uh, you, I will get some Hamilton Jacobi equation, which will be of some particular form. I, I, will, I will take some time to, uh, to write it. It's based on, on very, uh, on very uh, basic principles. It's, it's not a very complicated PD, except maybe for the PD persons. It might be, uh, it, might, it, it, it look uh, weird. But if, if you look at it, if you know nothing about P, if you have you no know, uh, a priori, it's, uh, it's not so bad. And then there will be a Lagrangian formulation by some kind of duality here, which is still a little bit mysterious to me, I must say. And then from this, uh, I will deduce uh, something that I interpret as a large deviation principle. And uh, this uh, strategy, I think, is uh, documented, well documented in a book by uh, Feng and Kurtz, which essentially says that if you understand well viscosity solution of uh, such Hamilton Jacobi equations, you can uh, reach your, uh, your objective, your goal, by doing this, uh, this uh, flow uh, chart. Uh, and this is a book which is Large Deviation of Stochastic Processes. Okay, but if anyone has a direct uh, uh, strategy, I'm uh, very looking forward to it. Because I think the, the, the process is, uh, is uh, reasonably uh, simple. So I, I, I expect. Ex uh, on this. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They, 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 they do. They, they explain this. Uh, yes, why this strategy is, uh, is uh, yes, yes. For the, so, so this is for a strategy, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. That's all. Uh, yeah. Couldn't you just do some Feynman Katz formula? Uh, I mean, yeah. generalization of Feynman Katz formula, and then. Uh, Get the large deviations uh, for this process underlying this formula. Could be, could be. I have some reason to uh, maybe when uh, when I will show you the, the Lagrangian formulation, I have some reason for which it might be. Uh, but yeah, yeah, sure. I'm I'm most interested to uh, to such suggestion. So what what is a PD? So uh, the PD is better look. Uh, we should define. So remember, u epsilon is minus log of epsilon. The PD is minus du uh, 1 over for the Gaussian. I will put it everything into the integral over. So I'm just looking in 1D. The dimension does not play, play any role here. This is when you divide by F. Okay, and the only difference with the case of, bond, of bonded velocity is that you don't have this v square over two because this is uh, due to the rescaling of, of the velocity. You are looking at very large uh, possible, uh, very large possible, uh, very, very large velocity. Sorry. So as as, as epsilon goes to zero, formally, yes, and minus one. Uh, okay, let me put it there. Thank you. So that I single out the the. the the, the singular term. So formally, uh, you want this in the limit to be negative, no, non-positive. Otherwise, this might get uh, really big and uh, cannot uh, equilibrate with this part if it makes any sense in the limit. So you expect that uh, as epsilon goes to zero, if you epsilon converge to something, and it does, 
where this u0 must satisfy u0 of t xv below. Uh, the, so now I, I take directly the minimum in v prime. Plus v square over two. Okay, uh, as I as we uh, said yesterday, in the case of bounded velocities, uh, you don't get this one, so you get that u zero is a is a function that does not depend on v because it's uh, below its minimum in velocity. But now you have this additional term that uh, completely changes the, the picture. First picture u zero truly depends on v. Okay, and what does it look like? At least at first glance, you have. The velocity is zero, of course, which plays a, a crucial role here. Here, uh, I will. So this is, let's say, the minimum of u in velocity. So it's a, it's a, it's a given. Uh, suppose it is given to you. So you have this minimum value, and you have this. You have the parabola v square over two, and your function set uh, below the, the parabola. Okay, and your uh, u, your uh, u is somewhere below. Okay, this is a u. Okay, and it's. Uh, I mean, it's. Uh, you can see by eyes that it uh, must satisfies, uh, reaches its minimum value at zero, which is when you put v equals to zero in this inequality. Okay, so in particular, you have yes. Sorry. Uh, is always finite. Uh, no, no, it can be plus infinity. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, at, at least at initial time, you can allow for infinite uh, solutions. Uh, infinite, uh, the solutions take infinite values, uh, but then it will soon become finite uh, at any time. Okay. And so the second thing you can get, so this is a one constraint. And uh, so this is first observation. And my second observation is if you have a strict inequality formally, and you look again at your equation, it means that you will have something uh, negative divided by epsilon. This is uh, very small, very quickly. And uh, so everything will disappear. Okay, you have to take care about the fact that you have uh, it's it's not a interval uh, integral on a on a finite interval, but you can okay uh, for, for large velocity uh, you have argument to say that the u will be large, so you don't really care about the the integral at the large velocity. So formally this goes away, and it remains only uh, one minus du zero over dt minus v du zero over dx equals to zero. This is in case of strict inequality in the limit. And uh, if you can prove, and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's possible, that u epsilon, u epsilon will converge to u zero uh, in a certain sense, uh, for example, uniform convergence is, is fine. Okay, if u epsilon converges uniformly to, to u zero, and so it means that you have a negative, uh, if you have strict inequality here, you have a negative value in the limit. We divide by epsilon, it is very small. This uh, the exponential, uh, becomes very small and it, it remains only a free transport. Okay, so this is uh, at this point you are in a very good shape. Okay, because what can u zero uh, does? Either it will be exactly on the parabola, and you know what it is, or it will be uh, strictly below, and you have an equation for it. Okay, so it's uh, you are in a, in a good shape. Either you have a, you have a value for u zero or you have an equation for u zero, which is uh, which is fine. Okay. So uh, from one, let's say one plus two, what you get is either a value for u zero or an equation. Okay. There is one. Uh, uh, missing information, and this is a big point, is uh, what is the minimum of u? Okay, if, uh, again, if you know what is the minimum of u, u will be either the parabola or it will either coincide with the parabola on some, uh, for some velocities, or you will get an equation for it. And the, the equation is very easy, it's just free transport. 
Okay. Uh, but for that, you need to know what is minimum of u. And uh, of course, you need to prescribe it because otherwise, uh, if you don't prescribe the minimum of u, this is just invariant by uh, adding a constant. If you, have a, if you add a constant to u0, you have the same uh, inequality there, and you have the same equality there, the same equation there. So you, you, you are missing a constant, and this constant is essentially what is minimum of u. Okay? And this is where uh, it becomes a little bit, uh, how to say, uh, not completely uh, uh, straightforward. I will write what it is, the equation for the minimum of u, and then I will try to motivate it. And then I will give more, uh, more details about, because this is very loose argument as you, as you noticed. Okay, so uh, the dynamics of the minimum of u in velocity, it's, uh, it's uh, of course, it's, uh, it's, it's not completely, uh, it's quite natural that such uh, quantity appear because uh, it corresponds to the integral in velocity. It's, uh, of course, it is, uh, uh, the, the, the equation is non-local in velocity, so you have a non-local uh, quantity to look at. Okay, so the dynamics, so the equation for the dynamics are the following. You have d over dt of the minimum of u, the minimum in t, which is non-positive. So first thing, this is a non-increasing function, but it's not enough because uh, it can be uh, any non-increasing function. And moreover, this minimum of u is zero if the minimum is attained only at zero. There is some weird condition telling you that either it's, it's, it's certainly non-increasing and it is stationary if uh, the minimum is reached in the velocity, the minimum in velocity only at the origin. It must be reached at the origin. We already saw that. And if, it's, if it is the only uh, point, then uh, there is no uh, dynamics. Okay, so now let me try to. So this is a weird part. This is where you, will, you, you start to panic when you, when you are doing PDs because it does not look like a standard. Uh, at least to me, it was, uh, it was rather new. There is some. Um, Something which are close in, uh, in uh, what is called uh, what is called uh, impulse uh, control, but yet it's not completely uh, the same. And this is uh, uh, this is quite degenerated if you want, if you want to make an analogy. But for, for the moment, we don't need to uh, make any analogy. And I'll try to to explain you. So I have two things to explain. First, why uh, how do these conditions uh, where do they come from? For which reason do they do they come as they are? And the second thing, which might be even more uh, uh, challenging, is to convince you that there is enough information to to make a, to to have a solution. Okay, in other in other sense that if you if you gather this and that and that, you have a unique solution. Okay, existence of solution uh, is not completely uh, difficult because it's just a, a limiting argument to let epsilon go to zero. There is some compactness. You, you epsilon up to subsequences will converge to something. And if you, uh, you, you can make a rigorous what I, what I said, all, uh, almost up to this point, but this point is, uh, you, you are close to, to this point uh, there. So it's not complicated to assemble all these inequalities from the limiting procedure as epsilon goes to zero, making rigorous the loose, the loose argument I presented. What is, I think, more challenging is to uh, convince uh, ourselves that uh, there is enough information, okay? But uh, and that there is a unique solution. Okay, so first, maybe I'll, 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 I'll begin with the second one. Because the second one, I think, is a... Uh... Excuse me, Vincent. Yes. Uh... I'm confused. So the dynamics of menu, this does not fully describe the dynamics, right? I mean, Sorry. So 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 uh, so the dynamics that you write there, it yeah. does not fully describe. The it dynamics, does. Right? It does. It does. Okay. So let me explain why it does. Sorry. It's a u zero. Sorry. Yes. It's it's a limit. My limiting function. Now I will work only with uh, with u zero. Ah. Yes. 
So let me write in a more concise way my PDE for U0. Let's say it's a Hamilton Jacobi PDE, which is the following. I have, so it's my first two things is either uh, I write it this way, mean minimum of u zero prime v prime minus v square over two. The first thing is this maximum of these two things is zero. Either this one is negative and I have this uh, transport equation there, or uh, or this one is uh, zero and uh, that's it. And this one I know that it's non. Uh, non uh, positive just because it's equal to uh, to something positive there, okay, uh, uh, which can be zero in the limit, so it's something non negative. This is my uh, very first equation here, okay. So the max of these two things is zero, and the second one is the dynamics of the minimum of u d over dt. The minimum of u in velocity is zero, uh, and it is zero if the argmin. Is the minimum is reached only at the reach. Okay. Uh, so it does not look like, but it's a Milton Jacobi equation. It's the analogous of by du over dt plus one half du over dx square equals to zero, which was my example of yesterday. Okay. It's a function relating uh, partial derivative on gradients and this additional uh, condition there. So wh why is it enough to determine a unique solution? So I will not make a proof of that. For the for the for the the, the, the good reason is that I didn't say what is the solution. Because I need, uh, as you know, it's a Hamilton Jacobi equation, so it has no uh, generally uh, no, no unique uh, solution. You have to prescribe viscosity conditions. So you, it means that you have to uh, prescribe viscosity solution for such a system, which is some, uh, some, uh, some, uh, something to do. And once you have uh, done the, which is essentially to make uh, inequalities in a proper sense with test function, I will not present that at all. But once you have done uh, this, uh, this uh, work of defining properly viscosity solution for that, then you can address this issue of uniqueness. Otherwise, there is a generally no unique solution uh, out of this uh, equation. But uh, there is a, uh, let's say some technical part that I put under the carpet in the sense of viscosity. You have to, to, to say what it is, but it's a, it's a natural extension of the, of the definition. But let me do a drawing, which I think is much. So I do the same. I have my parabola. Which is my uh, my constraint. I have my minimum here of u. So what what will happen? My solution might stick to the parabola in some places. Okay. Okay. In this case, I have no. It's my first condition which is satisfied, and then at some point it might detach from the parabola. Okay. And actually, if you, if you do a numerical solution, it looks pretty much like that. So what will happen? In this case, I have one a single minimum uh, point, which is at the origin, but this is because it's, uh, it must be uh, under the parabola. OK. So what will happen in this case? My dynamics tells me that on the, on the, on the parabola, I know nothing. Outside of the parabola, there is free transport. So there are, some, there are some dynamics. Free transport, which I mean uh, du over dt plus v du over dx uh, minus one equals to zero. So we have this free transport there. So th this part of the solution will uh, actually uh, move. Okay. But up to, the, up to the time where there is only a single minimum key value, uh, nothing else moves because the minimum value will not move. Okay, this is my, uh, my condition. Uh, sorry, this is my condition there. I'm with this. Excuse me, Vincent. Yes. So this is a snapshot at a time t at a point x. Yes, yes. You, you have to think that x is in the other direction and there is a. Okay. 
and you have particles coming all around because what it means if you want to think in terms of a large deviation, what it means to have some mass here. So it's a relative mass, which is very small because you are looking at exponential scale. So this uh, gap here is a huge uh, difference, discrepancy between the densities because you are looking at exponential of u uh, divided by epsilon. Okay. But uh, because of free transport, there are particles that are, are, are coming from uh, over positions. And those particles, they will uh, add up to the mass. So this uh, part will move and it will decay up to some time where, so at, at later time, maybe I can, uh, I do it. Uh, at later time, this branch of the solution might touch minimum of you. So it decays because it's essentially the contribution of the mass which is coming to this point. So here you are at the non-zero X, so you are far away. You are looking at large velocity. So the interpretation is that so it's uh, particles which are, which are actually uh, coming to this, uh, to this point. And because they are coming to this point, they have large velocity and they, uh, they increase the mass. But it, it might be increasing for some over initial data. You, you might tune an initial data for which it, it is increasing, but. What, how do you control the U over the X? What do you mean? But you have a du over dx, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So how do you control that term? You mean by to, to know which sign yeah. is yeah. is that? Uh, I have no. Um, it's, uh, it's 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 an example. I don't claim that it's necessarily decreasing. Okay, but if you start from the from all the mass center that x equals to zero, this is how it looks like. It looks like at any uh, position at any time. This is kind of a, this is a drawing of the of the fundamental solution of the of the process. But if you tune some uh, some initial condition and you let the flow evolve, it might increase at some point. Sorry for the confusion. For the confusion. Sorry, can I ask one more? Yeah. Silly question. So, um, are you saying that the bit that's on the parabola isn't moving? And Sorry. If so, what? So that section that is on your yellow parabola, where the purple and the yellow lines are the same. Yes. You're saying no, no, where they're the same. Yeah. yeah. You're saying that it, the purple line is not moving there, the solution is not moving, or are you not saying that? Uh, I'm not saying that. Okay. I'm saying I have but no then, equation for it. But, but then how do you know, then how is it determining? Because uh, th this part will be moving. You have to think of, uh, of the, the first equation as being the mean, the mean of two things. If this one wants to send you there, then it might, uh, it might, uh, it might, uh, how to say, uh, uh, um, interfere with the with the with the branch which is on the parabola. I mean this branch of the parabola can evolve due to the fact that there is some other path which evolves. But it can't just kind of decide to move away on its own in the middle. How do you know that it uh, it, it, it will move if there is of mass uh, some mass coming uh, from over positions and this is due to a transport term. So what will happen at a later time what can happen at a later time is that this solution is still uh, below but after some time this point now this solution has now two uh, two uh, uh, minimum value i mean two uh, two minimal points and then so then what will happen is that you can uh, you can remove the 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 constraint of stationarity here you are now left to the inequality there okay so now what you know is that dt of mean of u is non-positive. This is your uh, what uh, you, what I've written tells you. And here comes the point: is that now this will keep moving because it has no constraint uh, due to so free transport is still acting there. So this branch will continue uh, moving because it is no constraint and it will uh, bring the minimum of u to a lower value. And then all the parabola will move all together due to your uh, very initial constraint that the u should be below the parabola. And now everything is moving together to the, to the fact that there is one free branch here, which is, uh, which is moving. Okay, so this free transport there will make this uh, move and this move and by the constraint, the constraint, all the parabola will move as well. Okay. So, so, so that's if you have no competition term in your 
PD, right? Because then this is for the linear part without growth. Yes, 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 yes. There are more complicated issues with the growth. Maybe I can tell, tell uh, say something at the end. Okay, so it's not a proof at all. Uh, Towards the proof, again, I, I will be a very uh, in trouble making a proof because I, I would need to, uh, to, to define for early viscosity solution what I, I don't want to do. But towards the proof, let me do only one computation of d over dt of minimum of u equal to zero. So this is a, the most technical uh, point. And let me do some argument which is not completely, uh, which is not rigorous, but it's uh, some kind of heuristics, which I think are quite uh, interesting and might, might convince that, that uh, it's, a, it's a meaningful uh, condition. So far, I've just written the condition and try to, to convince you that it carries at, at least some non trivial information telling you that there will be non trivial dynamics out of those, those inequalities. But uh, how to derive such, a, such an inequality? Uh, I think maybe the, the best uh, way to do it is to look at the, uh, at the equation, of course. And I will do one silly thing. I will just integrate my equation in velocity. OK? And not this one, because this one is not um, meant to be integrated, but I just integrate my original PD, which is D over DT F epsilon plus V DF over epsilon, which is uh, M epsilon of V, my uh, Gaussian distribution with a uh, variance, epsi variance epsilon in uh, rho, the spatial density minus F. And when I, when I integrate this, uh, uh, these two uh, term cancel, because they are it's just mass balance, and uh, what I get is that the integral is called the, the continuity uh, equation is that, that the, the, the density in space falls uh, with the flux term f epsilon plus um, uh, uh, um, it's an integral in velocity, sorry, yes, plus d over dx, integral of v f epsilon dv equals to zero, which is just that you have a, the flux of cells or the current which uh, uh, make your, your dynamics uh, of, the, of the density. I, this I can write it very similarly, just completely equivalent. I just uh, uh, put my integral inside. Sorry, I should have written that directly. And now I, I put my u. Okay. My, uh, my definition of u is that du over epsilon over dt plus v du over epsilon over dx. And what remains is because u is a, is a, is a log, so I want to have the, log, uh, the logarithmic derivative, so I just put a f outside dv equals to zero, and I renormalize and I divide by rho, which is a, just a function of t of x. This is for free because it's equal to zero and it's an integral in velocity. I can divide by rho if I want. And this is a measure. It's a, let, uh, it's a mu epsilon of v. The density, uh, it's a density measure. Uh, okay, so it's, 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 it's essentially the same, but just reformulated with my u. And now if I look at my uh, picture here, you see that in this case, so uh, my density, because of the discrepancy in the mass uh, due to the fact that uh, u is a log of, uh, of f, uh, if I am in this case, I have only mass at zero in the limit when epsilon goes to zero. And in this case, I may have uh, two Dirac masses contributed with some weight to the solution. So I expect, and this is the heuristics, uh, I expect that d mu uh, epsilon, which converge in some sense to uh, some uh, d mu zero, which will be, let's say, and this is very loose. I'm sorry about that. A sum of uh, i equals zero to, uh, let's say, some uh, k 
of uh, pi uh, i delta v minus v i. The sum of Dirac masses located at the, those v i's, which are the argument of fusible. Sorry. Yes. F epsilon over rho is, is a measure for each x? Or? Yes, in velocity, because rho is the integral of f in velocity. Oh, yeah. We just integrate in velocity. So by definition, it's a, it's a, it's a measure. So let's assume that I have this uh, decomposition in the limit, which uh, is, uh, is, uh, is simply due to the fact that uh, I'm looking at uh, F which is exponential of minus U epsilon over epsilon. So because epsilon is going to zero, F is going to concentrate in velocity where U epsilon reaches its maximum. We know, we all know it's much more complicated than that in real life. You want to, if you want to have this, we need to have a good control of uh, what uh, is the shape of U around V. And you cannot directly apply uh, Laplace transformation because U depends itself on epsilon. We know it's, it's, it's much more complicated than that. And this is one of the magic of the viscosity solution is that you can um, rigorously, uh, uh, how to say, uh, justify everything by using test functions. The viscosity solution is essentially, you replace a U epsilon by a phi, a test function with no epsilon anymore, and then you can do whatever you like, okay? But at the moment, let me uh, be very uh, uh, non-rigorous there, and then you have to use viscosity solution to make it uh, rigorous. But this is uh, technically a little bit more involved, but it's essentially the same ideas. So this is why I, I take this. Uh, Okay, and it comes the, 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 the argument. What now if I plug this into my, uh, let's say, uh, average PDE? So it's an average PDE. So we get what? The integral of uh, du epsilon, uh, du zero over dt plus v. So again, I'm, I'm doing crazy things. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm passing into a, a limit which is not well defined into a PDE which, uh, for which I have no control at the moment. It's, it's very weird. But again, with this quality solution, you can do everything uh, correct there. Then uh, it will be the sum of the Dirac masses, V minus VI. So what does it look like? It looks like I, I have to single out the velocity zero because the velocity zero is easy because V zero here, there is no gradient there. So it's just du over dt of dx and v of zero. And for, uh, sorry, I have to forget that this, for example, from uh, zero, let's say that assume that uh, v zero is zero. Because I know that the, the minimum is rich at zero, so I can always choose the first velocity to be the origin. And this will be my first term. And that will be the remainder. The remainder will be the sum of y from one to n, I've singled out the velocity zero of du over dt plus v du over dx at some vi, uh, tx vi, sorry. And I have some weight, I, uh, I, I forgot to put the weight, I have p zero here, and these are my weight pi. Okay, and now I have to remember what is my PDE. So this is what I this is what I want. I want the dynamic. I want the value of this du zero over dt. This is what I'm looking for because this is the value of the minimum because I'm at the origin. Now what it is certainly vi is non-zero for i uh, bigger than one. So certainly because I am at the minimum value, I am below the parabola. So I have free transport here. So this is equals to minus one because it cannot be on the parabola because it's not at zero. So I am below the parabola and I have the dynamic. So this is my second case here. So I get P zero uh, D U zero over DT minus the sum of the PI for one to uh, K. Sorry, to, to the K. 
Okay, and the sum of the pi the pi is one minus p zero. So it's p zero d u zero over d t plus one minus p zero because it's uh, there, uh, there are probabilities. But this was zero from the beginning. Up, this is equal to zero because it's my uh, the conservation of my equation with respect to velocity. Okay, and now I have two. Uh, so it gives me uh, what I wanted, which is d u over d t at zero at the origin t x and zero. Very formally, very uh, it is equals to p zero minus one over p zero, which is uh, non-positive and uh, which is zero if p0 equals to one, which means that I have only one uh, Dirac mass at the origin and nothing else. Also, is it, is it useful to like, keep track of the like, p0 type thing? So, so in the case where you have more than one point in your argument, yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, if you have more than one point in your argument, uh, is it useful to keep track of the p naught? Like, so, so well, the thing that I'm most confused about, which I think uh, you've tried addressing a few times, but I'm still confused, is the the derivative of the minimum being less than or equal to zero is not the same as being able to say exactly how fast the minimum decays, right? Yes, yes. So we have no control. We don't know what is p zero. In general, except if we know that it's one, and in this case, it means loosely that there is only one uh, direct mass, or there is only one minimum at the region, at least in terms of um, contribution of mass to the to the, to the density. So what I mean is, I, I don't know what is p zero, but the only thing I retain is that either I know that p zero is less than one, which gives me the correct sign, or p zero is equals to one, and it gives me zero. And I interpret it as my second condition, which is if argmin is uh, is only the origin, then uh, I have no dynamics. Yeah. Or uh, alternative speaking, if I have only one term here, I know that d u over d t will be zero. But this is where you see there is something uh, happening because there is not enough information in this kind of computation to say anything. But you don't need that. You, you need only uh, an inequality here. Okay. So let me. Uh, Excuse me. Yeah. Um, I must be missing some. some oh yeah. Thanks. Uh, I must be missing something obvious, but the way you've written it now, shouldn't it be one minus P0 because we have P0 times the time derivative? There's, there's actually two sign errors on the board and they can't. I think, uh, I think it, it, be. it should be. So the, it should, the, the, the yellow one, one, right? One so this one is a minus yeah, that should be one. plus one and then it comes out right. Yeah. 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 You think yeah. this is P0 minus one? No, no, that, that one's correct. Okay. But the line above, there should be a plus sign. Yeah. Uh, yes, because it's a free transport. This one is a plus. And the, the, and the plus. yellow minus one should be a plus one, right? Yeah. This one is a plus. Uh, yeah. Yes, this one is a plus. Yeah, now it all checks out. Sorry, yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay. So, may I also ask one more question? Yes. Uh, so, uh, you seem to indicate that the fact that the minimum decreases is not a consequence of the variational inequality uh, that you wrote on top, right? It so is, you need it as an extra information. Yes. Right? So you have yes. the, the, the two uh, yes. inequalities. Yes. The main information is this one. You have to you have to ensure that there is no dynamics where there is only one uh, minimum at the origin. All right. This yeah. must be uh, because I have the impression that the weak inequality is actually implied by the equation no. written above. No. 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 Because you see that the, on this equation above, you can always add a constant in v to your uh, to your u zero. No, a, con a constant in t on x. No, a constant. Uh, sorry, what the? Uh, no, you you can you can add a constant to zero. Sorry, and uh, I'm not sure because uh, in, yes, you can add a constant in various. Uh, so, so, so if the argument is only at the origin, then uh, the right hand term is zero, and so the left hand term has to be negative. And with v equals zero, it tells you that uh, u has to be uh, decreasing there. You mean here from this one? No. No, there is no there is no time variation in this in this no the, the left hand term then has to be yeah but this one negative. does not tell you what happens at the origin because uh, you are in the in the second uh, in the second uh, case well it tells you that the left hand side has to be negative right okay so you okay so it has to be negative so u zero could be okay i see it's, 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 okay okay yeah thanks 
Okay, so now what can you do with that? So first, as I told you, you can define properly viscosity solution, prove uniqueness, prove convergence, and uh, and uh, and do everything there rigorously. So this was uh, something. Maybe I should have written. I think I I told that, but let me recap. So it was a joint work with Boin, uh, Grenier. And uh, Grégoire Nadin. And uh, now you can do more because now you have uh, you have equations. You can work with equations. In particular, you can compute the particular. Uh, uh, you can compute one particular solution, which is of interest, which is the fundamental solution. Which is the one. Um, uh, such that u of zero of x and v is what it's. Uh, so it means that it, it's either zero or plus infinity or zero or plus infinity, where zero x what, uh, means uh, either zero if x zero or plus infinity elsewhere. The equivalent, let's say, of the of the Dirac mass in log scale. It's a convex uh, characteristic function. So for this one, I claim that uh, so the complete the, the full formula of uh, you can compute u at t x and v. It's complicated to to have the full velocity profile because the velocity profile has this sort of shape. Okay, so you have to uh, you have to uh, you have to. Uh, Sorry, so if I'm confused about your initial conditions here. Yeah, the this is zero only at x equals zero and v equals zero and infinity everywhere. Else. Yes, yes. Okay. So you will see that you see immediately that it does not satisfy uh, the first constraint to be below the parabola because it's plus infinity. Uh, but uh, in the sense of a semi-continuous uh, function, it will be uh, the case that t equals to zero plus. So you, you can define that, and immediately the, the constraint will be uh, will be satisfied. But uh, yes. Yes, it's a very the indicator function of uh, zero zero. You start with one particle with no ve with velocity zero, and you see what uh, what's going on. No, so, also, do you want yes. the, the product of those, not the sum? No, it's a sum because it's a uh, it's a log of. Uh, so for any v, but as long as x is zero, you always get infinity, except zero. Uh, you, you you must have both v sorry, equals to zero and x zero. equals to right, zero. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I should have written. Okay, so the couple of the two is, is zero. So in this case, what you can compute is what can you can what can I can easily express is not u itself, but the minimum, which of course is a, is an important quantity, which tells you how much how much mass you have at t and x, without uh, the details of the of the velocity profile, and this is uh, either two third, uh, three half, sorry. <laughs> X to the three half. Uh, 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 no, sorry, X of the two third. I'm confused with the exponent like this. Or uh, X square over two T square plus T. I will explain uh, later where it comes from. And uh, but just have a look at that. What does it look like in X now? As T goes to infinity, and I, I forgot to say when uh, do you have those condition. This is for X. Uh, larger than t to the three half and x, uh, no, the opposite, smaller and x larger than t to the three half. So we, uh, t to the three half is a scaling. We saw in the epsilon uh, that it's a correct scaling, and you have this uh, this uh, conditions. So what does it look like? You see that when t goes to infinity, uh, this uh, region will uh, expand, it will increase. So you will see only that. A guy. So that guy is something which is like this. So this is x uh, three half x to the two third. Okay. And then on top of that, uh, be, beyond some uh, range, which is t to the three half, you have a parabola in x. Okay. So your solution, there is this envelope. And then there is this parabola, and it's symmetrical, of course. Uh, you have a change at this, at this point. 
Okay. And what is interesting to me, at least, is that it's very different from the standard uh, diffusion problem because in standard diffusion problem, the equivalent would be x squared over 2t, which is a fundamental solution. Uh, which is a rate function of a particle of, with initial condition where particle is at the origin. So it's a different from let's say the, 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 the Brownian case, which is du over dt plus one half u over dx where for which u uh, of t of x is uh, with a, a particular solution which is x square over 2t okay which is a one that satisfies that at x equals to zero uh, no at t equals to zero either x equals to zero uh, either you have zero at the origin or plus infinity uh, elsewhere which is uh, the same uh, the same one and this one is of course, but I just drew the, the parabola. Uh, those parabola are going to, uh, to, uh, to zero. Okay, what does it tell you to me? At least, what does it tell me is that in this regime, <clears throat> even in very large time in this scaling, so here in very large time, you will have. Uh, uh, still a positive but small probability to find a particle. Okay, in this case, even in very large time, at any position there will be a, a order one uh, 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 exponentially a small uh, uh, probability of finding a particle. My point is that this envelope is a, is an obstacle. The solution cannot go to zero, so it means that it's very very uh, rare to find a particle far away out of this process uh, compared to this one because of this uh, i mean the shape are, are very uh, very different here the, the limit is just uh, it's just zero okay uh, <laughs> i don't know how much time do i uh, I'll have. ah it's close to the end so uh, two things i have two things to uh, to say is uh, where does this come from? So this comes from the fundamental solution of the full uh, process. So this comes from the duality. To compute that, you have to, uh, you have to essentially to resolve the problem. And to resolve the problem, we have seen yesterday that there is one uh, good formula, which is a representation formula with the Lagrangian. So my next point is to uh, show you what is a Lagrangian. Uh, uh, formulation, let's say. Solution and this is so there is a, a theorem telling you that u of t x v, which is infimum over curves of uh, the, the action of the curve plus u of zero uh, plus u zero of. Uh, Made bracket like this x zero v zero uh, is the viscosity solution of the PD. So I show you that I give you one one formulation and I claim this is a solution. This is where I'm not quite happy because. I'd like to have a direct argument saying that if you start from the stochastic processes, you end up with this uh, with this uh, red function. My strategy is very indirect. I, I get a PDE. I work hard to define what it is, to uh, convince everyone that it has a unique solution, to define what is a solution, and then I uh, I work I work hard to guess what is a what is a solution, and then I prove that it is a solution. And this step is uh, to me is not. Uh, is not straightforward because you have to okay. But what what is L? L of a curve, and what is a curve? Maybe I should say what is a curve. Let me write it like that. Rather than notation, I will I will say what is a, what is a curve. This is my first drawing. I have x, so I have x zero, 
And then I am doing this uh, jump process, uh, jump process, this velocity jump process that move with straight lines. So in my definition, I, I should uh, end up at uh, at a given x with some given velocity, because this is where I'm I'm looking at. I'm looking at x with velocity v, which is my end uh, velocity. From my formulation, I, I start at x zero with a velocity v zero. Okay, and between this first point and this initial velocity, which are part of my uh, my uh, uh, the end point of the curve, I, I I can make several jumps in velocity. I don't make jump in space. Space is just x dot equals to v straight straight motion, and I do some jumps, and I will have v one, v two, v three, and this one will be uh, v four equals to v. The last one, okay, and then I arrive at x. And let me say that, for example, this v3 is zero. I've chosen one zero velocity at some point. It could be, okay? So what is the cost of such a, of such a curve? It is the cost of taking a large velocity at some point. Large means non-zero here, because uh, I'm in the, in the regime where I have a, I'm looking at very far and with very large speed. So this is the sum from, one to n of v i uh, square. I don't count the first one. The first one is given to me. I have not chosen it. There is no uh, there is no relevant here. It was given to me. So there is no. Uh, I start the sum at the one here. But this is only one part of the problem. This is to uh, to handle the the fact that you have to that you draw distribution from your from your Gaussian distribution. This is the right function of the Gaussian distribution. In velocity, and then I have to count how much time I spent with non-zero velocity. So this is a sum of uh, <coughs> let me call this. Uh, so I was not very happy with my uh, first notation. Let me call this delta t zero, delta t one, delta t two, etc. It's the sum of the delta t i. How much uh, time do I spend from i equals to zero uh, to uh, to uh, n? Correct. And here, I this is only if v i is not zero, and this is a sort of a weird thing. I can't. It's it's a running cost of one because this is due to the fact that I keep my velocity. Okay, this is when I keep my velocity. It cost me. Uh, uh, this is uh, the exponential. Uh, this is due to the exponential uh, uh, process. The exponential law. It, it cost me one to keep my velocity only if it is large. If it is small, it does not. It does not. Uh, it has no cost. Zero velocity comes with no cost. And the idea is that if I have a plateau of zero velocity, if I unscale, it means fact that I have been allowed to change many times, taking only smaller one. I mean, order one. In the original scaling means zero in that in that scaling, okay. And now we see the theorem that this is uh, let's say the Lagrangian of my my solution, okay. And the last one now uh, there are several rearrangements you can make. For example, you see that in this case, uh, let me just do one last thing. If I take this one, for instance, with this first piece, okay, if I just look at that. So this one is silly, okay, because I can reach the same point directly without adding, with, without changing velocity with the same amount of time, which cost, which cost me one uh, anyway. So it cost me the same amount of time here. And uh, I have only one change of velocity, so I will not pay anything for this one. And more than that, the velocity will be uh, by convexity will be uh, will be uh, the, the sum of the cost uh, of these two will be above this one. So by uh, some uh, very uh, simple rearrangement, you can you can uh, check that in fact you can have only one intermediate non-zero velocity in all this uh, business. Otherwise, it will be too costly. Okay. And doing that, and I will stop there uh, because my time is over. I will just reformulate what it is, this guy. 
So what it is this guy, the minimum of u of t, x, and v is simply the minimum of one half x divided by s square plus s from s between below and plus. And what it is, what it corresponds to, it corresponds to the fact that I want to reach x in time t. And the best way to do is to do a, a single shot and then a plateau, because the plateau costs me nothing. It has velocity zero, I pay nothing. It has velocity zero, I pay nothing. So plateau are for free. The only point is I have to get there. And I have to get there in time s, intermediate time s, with velocity v. And velocity v is, of course, x divided by s, by definition, starting from the origin here. Uh, sorry, this is for my uh, this is my special solution uh, starting from uh, from a zero of uh, x and v. So this one is one big jump and then uh, nothing. So either I have to to saturate and to do it in time t, but it might be uh, in particular in this area, it's more interesting to do it uh, in a in a short uh, time because it's not so far away uh, anyway. Do it in short time. So I have this, uh, this formula here, and I have to minimize over uh, in intermediate time. And if you minimize this, you get this, uh, this thing, because it depends whether S is below or above. Uh, OK, so I, I'm, I, I'm done. Uh, thank you very much for, for your attention. And tomorrow, I will maybe conclude that very quickly and, and show you another uh, case studies where you have a similar, uh, similar issues. Thank you. So, any questions for Francois? Oh, uh, yeah. So, how much do you use that you're using a Gaussian distribution here? I mean, how much do you use the fact that you've got a parabola? Can you take some yeah. nice shape? <clears throat> Maybe that's what you can say tomorrow. No, no, yeah, uh, it's <laughs> a very good question. To be honest, I, I, I believe that you can replace this by any sort of uh, convex function. So, you get the exponential of this uh, potential as a, Gaussian, as a distribution uh, generalizing Gaussian. I'm not completely sure that there might not be technical issues, but in spirit, it should be uh, similar. You just have to replace uh, what is inside the exponential. For more complicated uh, shape, like uh, let's say uh, uh, algebraic decay, I have no idea. And it might be that you have to, to change the scale uh, differently. Okay, but so, uh, yeah, I think it's quite flexible at this, uh, at this point. Thanks. So in your your minimum for you uh, grows like t, right? Which means that your original function f is sort of exponentially decaying like e to the minus t. For large, uh, this is for small t. For large t, it's, it is stuck to, uh, to that. All right. I read it wrong. I have no question. Thanks. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, could you go back, please, to the to the variational inequality, if it's still on the board? Is it yeah. on the board? Oh, yeah. it's not on the board. No, but I will. Uh... No. Okay. Well, then, okay. Then, never mind. So, so, so you wrote it down with the, the you take u minus min u. So, uh, I mean, I'm a little bit familiar with the, those where you the minimum is always zero, right? So, for example, the Evans Suganidis approach to reaction mm -hmm. diffusion yes, equations. Yes, yes. There, yes. Uh, you know that, well, the minimum is always zero because uh, your solution is always <clears throat> bounded by one. And yeah. actually, you're not yeah. considering like a case where you're, uh, where you start from something exponentially small. So, uh, so is this. Uh, so, so the fact that you have this minimum uh, gives some additional complications. Would this simplify if you just uh, said, okay, uh, I, I choose uh, by setting it such a way that I know that the minimum is always equal to zero? Okay, no, I, I think you have to keep it. Uh, so what, what, what you say is that now if you have a non-linear problem with growth, let's say with logistic growth, uh, and, and for example, if you start from, uh, from KPP, uh, so from, from KPP, the equation is DTU plus DXU uh, square one half plus uh, one minus exponential of minus U over epsilon, which is a one minus U. So in this case, either it's, it's similar in spirit, either U 
is positive and you have an equation, which is your Hamilton Jacobi equation, or u is zero, uh, you know that u cannot be, uh, cannot be negative because rho is less than one by the maximum principle. Either u is uh, zero and u is zero and you don't need to have an equation. So, it's, so, so in this case, the equation is a minimum of dtu plus dxu square plus one u uh, equals to uh, zero. If I'm, or is it a maximum? I'm always confused. Uh, u must be a non-negative. Yes, it's, uh, like this. <clears throat> so it's, it's similar in spirit. And there is one thing, technical thing called the Friedlin condition. And I think it's even called Friedling N condition or something like this. In uh, if you look in uh, in both papers, yeah, but that's that's not Which, necessary. Sorry, that condition is 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 not necessary. It just tells you that that condition allows you to solve this equation you, separately and then to yeah. truncate. And is what is what is your question? Well, you don't need it in order to. Uh, I mean, the, this the is always a uh, well like that. It's, yeah. it's still sufficient to describe. Uh, yes, yes. Because of the solution of that. Yes. Yes, if this one is only to, to, to simplify uh, this into uh, right, right, right. To, to, to compute it. Okay. Right. Uh, in our case, uh, I, 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 I don't think you, have, you, you can separate uh, the two things in, in what I have written. You, you have to, uh, to combine. You, you, you cannot solve without the condition of the minimum and then uh, restore it uh, at the end. I think it's not, it's not possible. Okay. And there is one tricky thing is that because just to answer because uh, I do not have time. If you add logistic growth into the, my, uh, my problem with velocity here, you can do all the same. You can have something like this where you have replaced that but uh, by my variational inequality uh, above and you replace this by the fact that the stationary state is u equals to the parabola with minimum of u is zero. Right. So you, you can write this, which is a big system with many inequalities. Right. You can solve it. And you can you can get you can you can combine it with that, and you can prove that uh, the then you have a rate of acceleration which is uh, two third uh, one plus r t to the three half over one plus r, and then maybe a three half something. You, you, you have a complicated uh, you have but you get exactly the rate of acceleration because you are able to compute essentially the minimal. Uh, uh, thing you have to put some r in, in there and you have to to subtract minus t because you are growth in the population but you are able to do that and there was one tr tricky observation is that this finding condition is not satisfied mm -hmm. so you should not be able to do that but you are able to do that because it's not satisfied only for large velocities and to understand the propagation only the <laughs> velocity zero is, is enough because this is what uh, carries mass so there is some subtlety in this side, but at the end, you, you can do essentially the same as in events uh, using their, uh, you, you, you have a representation formula with stopping times. So, and, uh, and it works the same up to uh, some complication that, but this, which is not, which does not appear uh, in, the, in the results. Okay. Uh, well, if there are no further questions, let's thank Vincent again. And thank you. Talk about it.